Hi everyone, thanks so much for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Tim Pham, joined by Karthik Venkatraman. Karthik, what a night for the Zags. Gonzaga men's basketball almost lost its number one ranking tonight. Yeah, they had a close call against Pepperdine tonight, a conference foe, but survived and won 75 to 70. Uh, Brenna Green is going to join us from the McCarthy Athletic Center to give us the defining moment of this game on how the Zags pulled this one off. Karthik, Tam, it was not pretty in the kennel here tonight, but Gonzaga escaped with that 75 to 70 win over Pepperdine. Like you said, the key moment of this one came with just five seconds left. That's how close it was. Gonzaga up by only three. The game's leading scorer, Colby Ross with the ball, and Killian Tilly comes flying in to deny the Pepperdine sharpshooter. Admon Gilder would sink two free throws after that to ice the contest. The Frenchman also led this team in scoring tonight with 20. Here's Tilly and his teammates talking about the game-defining moment. I could see you just want to get it and shoot a three, so, so the ice cream, I just jumped on him and, jumped and blocked it, so yeah, that's what we needed. Big time. Big time. Made a great play. Kind of helped out. We weren't we weren't supposed to be switching that ball screen or anything like that, but uh, Killian helped out and made a great play. And, um, and the way that Ross was shooting the ball, I had a good chance of going in, so I'm um, really glad he was there for that. Let's look at the big picture here. A lot of Gonzaga fans extremely concerned with how the Bulldogs have played to start WCC play. On Thursday, they trailed at the half to the Portland Pilots. Today, obviously, a tight one with the Pepperdine team. They were favored to beat by 20 points. Corey Kispert was pretty honest about the team's effort the past few games, while Mark Few doesn't think it's a slow start as long as the Zags win. I think it's it's a lot. It's internal. You know, the coaches can only do so much to to get get our get our energy going. Um, but it's got to come from us. It's got to come from one of us uh, being a catalyst, making a play, um, getting on the floor, that kind of thing. It really gets us going. At the end of the day, you're supposed to have more points than the opponent. So that's what we did. We played one on the road and against a good, talented team at home. So we're two and zero. So we'll keep trying to get better. By the way, Gonzaga, not the only WCC Blue Blood struggling right now. St. Mary's is currently in a four overtime game with Pacific. They are trailing by three points as of my last check on my trusty phone. Gonzaga now heads on the road to San Diego and to LMU to, uh, next week. Reporting in the kennel, I'm Brenna Green from Two Sports. All right, Brennan, thanks so much. All right, let's get to weather now. It's been unseasonably warm, but I hear we might be headed for a cool down. Evan Narani is in the Weather Center. Evan, you're also tracking some snow. That's right, Tim, and it really is dependent on where you are located as to whether or not you're going to be seeing larger accumulations or higher accumulations of snow or maybe just an inch or so. So we'll be talking about that in just a few minutes, but for today, a beautiful day around the inland northwest. We saw only the occasional snow shower, uh, but we do still have winter weather advisory that is in effect over the Cascade. That's important to note because those higher elevations, the mountain elevations are still expected to pick up on the possibility of an additional foot of snow through Monday morning. So that winter weather advisory remains. Uh, there previously was a wind advisory for western Montana that's now expired. The view out towards Snoqualmie Pass shows active snowfall, but the roads are looking all right right now. Wind speeds in the double digits in Spokane. That's sustained wind speeds. 14 mile per hour winds in Spokane, 5 in Deer Park, 8 in Coeur d'Alene, and 10 in Kettle Falls. All in all, the next 12 hours are expected to see a pretty decent drop in temperatures, but clouds that are rolling in are actually going to help prevent those temperatures from cooling down by all that much. So uh, we're going to stay in about the mid 30s overnight, warm up to the upper 30s and low 40s for tomorrow afternoon. Coming up, we will take a look at new updated snow totals between tomorrow and Wednesday. You can find out just how much snow your city is expected to see. That's in just a few minutes. Well, this is video sent to Creme 2 of an apartment fire in Spokane Valley. The fire displaced six people and killed one dog. Creme 2's Brandon Jones tells us the Red Cross is stepping in to help. Well, at first glance, they look like normal apartment units, but then you quickly realize this has turned into a melted disaster that forced people to scramble and find a new place to live while all of their belongings were stuck inside of the apartments. If you are in need of immediate assistance as a result of a fire or other local disaster, please press 1. It was only 3.15 in the morning when firefighters rushed to the scene of a second alarm fire in Spokane Valley. 
the cause of that fire? It hasn't been determined yet while the situation is being investigated. One resident who wished to remain anonymous at this time was woken up by clouds of smoke floating through her building. How does that happen? I don't know. The fire raged on for nearly 40 minutes before firefighters were able to get it under control. In their efforts, they were able to make sure all residents were evacuated and contain the fire from spreading even more. Unfortunately, there was one dog that didn't make it out. Red Cross has stepped in to help those displaced by the damage. According to the Valley Fire Department, these same apartments had a fire several years ago while other residents lived there. On top of the smoke and fire, others are dealing with water damage from suppression efforts. Now, just inches away from a playground is a roped off portion of the complex that reads, Danger. From Spokane Valley, Brandon Jones, Crim2 News. Well, now to the latest on the rising tensions between the U.S. and Iran. Thousands of mourners gathered today for a funeral procession through Baghdad for Iran's top general and militant leaders killed in a U.S. airstrike near Baghdad's international airport. President Donald Trump says he ordered the strike to prevent a conflict. The U.S. classified Qasem Soleimani as a terrorist, but in Iran, he was a hero. Now the country's leader is threatening, quote, harsh retaliation for his death. Under my leadership, America's policy is unambiguous to terrorists who harm or intend to harm any American. We will find you. We will eliminate you. While many Republicans are applauding the decision, Democrats say Congress should have been alerted prior to the strike. The White House sent Congress formal notification under the War Powers Act today and also today additional reinforcement troops prepared for deployment from the Army's 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Looking ahead, a big announcement for Spokane's favorite son and the man behind our Project Inspire series, Steve Gleason. We now have a date for Steve to accept his congressional gold medal. It's January 15th, and this is the actual design of the medal he will receive. The congressional gold medal is the nation's highest civilian honor, and Steve is 11 days away from receiving it. Steve's road to the congressional gold medal started in football first as a star linebacker for Gonzaga Prep, then helping lead WSU to the Rose Bowl. And finally, an eight-year career in the NFL as one of the league's best special teams players for the Saints. His pump block in the game after Hurricane Katrina immortalized in a statue outside the Superdome. But the award had nothing to do with football. In 2011, doctors diagnosed Steve with ALS, an incurable disease which robs the body's use of all muscles. The diagnosis led to this scene in the Superdome, Steve limping to the center of the field to lead Saints fans in a pregame cheer, arm raised in defiance against ALS. This image is the reason behind the medal, and it became the image on the medal. Steve started Team Gleason, a nonprofit working to raise awareness about ALS, improve the lives of ALS patients, and find a cure. As Steve lost the ability to walk, speak, and breathe on his own, his effectiveness increased. Technology is the closest thing to a cure for ALS now, as eye gazing technology allows Steve to type by choosing letters on his computer screen. His passion for ensuring ALS patients lead meaningful lives led Congress to pass the Steve Gleason Act, forcing Medicare to pay for this type of equipment. Steve is the married father of two young children, Rivers and Gray. He participates in his kids' activities, leads national forums on advances in ALS treatment, and remains a crowd favorite at Saints home games. Now he is about to become the first former NFL player to ever receive the Congressional Gold Medal. We asked him this summer about receiving the award. It's pretty much totally insane that I will be receiving the Congressional Gold Medal. Given that the list of past honorees includes the Dalai Lama, Robert Frost, Rosa Parks, Thomas Edison and other humanitarian giants in history, it's hard to fathom being on the same list. At Krem, we have covered Steve's amazing journey since those days at Gonzaga Prep. And now we are honored to tell the next chapter of one of the most inspirational people on the planet. Congratulations, Steve.